Hello everybody and welcome back to Lawrence's Driving School and what we're going to do today is another driving test talk through and the purpose of the driving test talk through is just to help you with um, understanding and making sense of the driving tests and what the requirements are and what standards you need to reach in order to pass. So here the candidate is leaving the driving test centre, going round the car park and out of the gates. We're going to be turning left at the end, so it's a mirror, left door mirror, and a left signal. Just making sure no one's coming round that bend up there. And we'll be turning right at the end, so it's a mirror, a right door mirror and a right signal and off we go. Very interestingly, um, when the candidate pulled off from the parking spot, the examiner pre-instructed the left turn out the gates and the right turn at the end of the road, rather than giving the instruction just before. The candidate made a little mistake there, thought they were turning left, and they weren't, so it was easily corrected, all the mirrors were checked, and the candidate just carried on around the bend here. As we go along here, at the uh, roundabout ahead, we're going to be following the road straight over. So because we may be slowing down, it's a mirror check on the approach, just an internal mirror check. And we're just coming up, making sure it's all safe to go. That's a good move by the candidate to stay in the left lane, as, as there are two lanes on the approach. And coming up to the first roundabout, where we'll be following the road straight over. So this is quite a busy roundabout in Kettering, it's a, it's, we call it the Tesco's roundabout because it's where Tesco's is. And uh, the candidate is waiting patiently to come out. You can see as they come around the corner, I don't know whether you can see that or not, but they kind of swing over to the left into Pikesley Road there where the blue car's going. I don't know what the blue car's doing in that lane, but uh, anyway. Um, they're kind of coming round there and leaving across into Pikesley Road. Well, the blue car might have come from Tesco's, I suppose. That's why they're in that lane. Um, my advice here is just make sure it's totally clear before you go, because they do come around the corner, and many a candidate has pulled out thinking that that car's going to stay in the inside lane toward the roundabout, but actually come across to Pikesley, Pikesley Road there on the left. So off we go, very well timed there. Just as the black car was passing, the candidate pulled out. That was probably a good move, making sure the, the uh, black car wasn't in front of us if, or before us, if you know what I mean. Coming up to the road there, we're gonna be following the roundabout straight over. So another internal mirror check and a nice early assessment of the roundabout so no unnecessary stopping check 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 everything looks good and off we go just passing the exit before the one we intend to take so that would be a left signal and a mirror check and up to the roundabout we go and at the roundabout we'll be taking the second exit left down towards the a14 to huntingdon and bearing in mind it's the second exit, no left signal required on the approach, otherwise everybody will think you're taking the first exit. Coming up to the roundabout, we just make sure we know what's going on around us with the mirrors as usual. As we pass the second exit, the first exit I should say, it's a left signal, mirror checking. Old mirror check right mirror there as well, because sometimes they do come in on the right. Down this road we need to be getting to 60 miles an hour. Now the candidate's only coming up to about uh, 40, 50 miles an hour, so I would strongly recommend going a little bit faster than that to match the, the speed of the left lane of the dual carriageway. But the candidate gets on quite easily in the end, it's not too busy, and there we are poodling along the A14. Now the candidate's speed is 60 miles an hour at the moment, just over, maybe 62, 63. And I do believe 
they'll be leaving on the next exit. So the next exit is quite close. There's no point in overtaking anybody. We're coming up to 300 yards, which is probably a mirror check. 200 yards is a signal. And 100 yards, I always remind my students to remain at a constant speed. The Unfortunately, the candidates slowed down here a little bit to 52 miles an hour when they could have just carried on at 60 without too much slowing down. And we're going to be going up to the roundabout and turning right towards Bedford A6. So the candidates check the mirrors and chosen this lane, which is you can go to the A6 in this lane. I do believe um, the overall target of this roundabout is to go to Burton Latimer. It's the third exit right. Uh, a, a right signal could be done here. Passing that exit, moving into a left signal checking the mirrors as usual car on the outside lane behind us we've got to watch him and the lights are green so that's good just be careful of those lights they do change and off we go down into towards the next roundabout where we need to turn right to Burton Latimer so good mirror check there a signal and over to the right hand lane all the way over so the two there's it splits into three lanes at the end there the the two left ones go left only up to the a6 but we're turning right and a mirror check there a left signal being followed around by the black car and off we go down towards the next roundabout and at the next roundabout we'll be turning left very important thing here is um, there's a 30 sign coming up so just keep an eye on these signs and uh, the candidates been asked to pull up on the left somewhere along this road so it's a mirror check nice early signal because there is a car quite close behind maybe an earlier break than usual because of the uh, distance of the following car and we're going to be waiting here for a while um, I can't remember what the examiner was saying at this point but very soon we're going to be moving off again anyway it's a good opportunity to have a little chat really um, about just keeping an eye on the on the road signs um, you may have noticed as we've been driving around on this route there are lots of different speed limits and changing and signs to tell you where to go and really should keep a close eye on them especially on that big roundabout we've just done um, and off we go now quite often um, in a driving test if you're following a sat nav along this road this is Kettering Road going into Burton Latimer um, sat navs quite often re report this as a 60 and on one occasion one of my candidates did actually go up to 60 or try to go to 60 along this road and obviously it's a 30 you may have seen the signs before the roundabout um, so you don't really want to be doing 60 in a 30 don't ever believe the sat navs or the uh, sometimes the car gives a speed limit you can't always believe it a hundred percent you have to look at the signs yourself. So as we're coming up to the first mini roundabout, we're going to follow the road over. So no one's coming from the right. There's a waiting car on the left. That's Becky. And we've entered a 20 zone now. That's although it was pretty obvious, I suppose, if you rewind the video and have a look at those signs. A lot of people miss those signs when they're coming off the roundabout because they're negotiating the bend, try not to hit the curb, and they just forget to see um, that it's a 20 along this road. The candidate's doing 15, so that's good. I'm, I'm sure the candidate's aware it's a 20. They're not going any faster than 20 anyway at the moment, so they should know. 
lots of uh, pedestrian crossings here. It's always a mirror check on the approach to pedestrian crossings and then scanning left and right, see if anyone's waiting, see if any pedestrians are going to control the lights and be ready for that cyclist on, oh, it's a scooter on the left. And we're coming up to the next roundabout where we'll be turning right. Now this is a mini roundabout. So we're going to mirror, internal mirror, right mirror, signal right, mini roundabout sign on the left there. Oh, road closed down there. As we turn right, we don't need to signal off of a mini roundabout. Um, left signal is not required as it's such a tiny little thing. It's not the end of the world if you do it by mistake, as long as you don't mislead other road users. Um, bit of a squashy moment this one, but the candidate's going through with confidence. So that's very good. Good confident move. Looking, just keep an eye on what's going on behind when you're holding back for oncoming cars. And uh, what have we got here? The motorcyclist. So we're pulling over to the left again. And um, this will be the time when the examiner sets up the sat nav for the for the uninstructed drive where the candidate will just be following a sat nav. Um, I was wondering what the candidate was going to do here. There is a motorcyclist just waiting there. Um, but it all pans out in the end because the motorcyclist is about to move off. So the uh, Examiners ask the candidate to move on when ready. Ex um, wisely, the candidate is seeing. I think the candidate signalled at the same time as the motorcyclist, but nothing wrong there. No confusion. Everybody knew what was going on. And now we're following the sat nav instructions as we go through Burton Latimer. See what the red car's doing, it's waiting for us. That's good. Got to be very careful, never trust anybody. Um, the sat nav says to carry on at the roundabout. Um, to me, that's a left turn when we get there, it, it, but the sat nav says carry on at the roundabout first exit. Well, if you gave a left signal there, it'd be fine because it looks like a left to me <laughs> and it would help the white car seeing that signal. You'd be, you'd be signaling to leave it anyway, just enter the 40 zone. Oh, a bit of a glitch there in the, in the video. Probably went over a, probably went over um a pothole and that does that sometimes it just gives it a little event video but there's a bend coming up now we can see some deviation signs for that bend and a warning sign we just passed for it. It's a slow in the road, so it's a mirror check. Car behind's quite fast, so silver car comes up on the left. Everyone's doing their thing on that bend, aren't they? And off we go around this bend, and uh, you can see we're coming up to a national speed limit there. That's a national speed limit sign. Now, um, the candidate did not really get to national speed along this road. I mean, you can't get, it's not a target, it's um, it's a li It's just a limit. You don't need to get to national speed limit, but you do need to go um, to drive along really at a reasonable speed. Now the candidate's only doing 33 miles an hour. Uh, I know there's a slow in the road, but it's because the road's presuming you're going faster than that. We've got a blind summit here on the, 
on the bridge, but off we go again. Now we could really be going up a lot faster than this now along this long straight road. It's a national speed limit road and the candidate's only going up to, I think we reach, are we gonna reach 40? I hope so. We're 38 at the moment. The actual um, speedometer is a slightly higher than the speed you can see on the screen there. So the candidate may have reached 40 at that point. 40 would be a minimum, I would say, along that road. And we're gonna be turning left here onto, I do believe this is the A43. So we've got a giveaway sign and it's quite a busy road, this one. It's a 60 miles an hour road. Now the candidate did pick up some minor faults for not making progress. Not making progress means not really going fast enough when you could have gone faster quite safely. So we're gonna be waiting here. We need a nice big space here because they're all coming up at about 60. Um, lorry's turning, that's a really good blocker. We really should be going now. Oh no, sorry. Yes, the lorry did turn, yeah. So we could have gone. Yeah, the lorry can be used as a shield if it's blocking the road, it's big enough. And off we go onto the National Speed Limit Road. Now, as I said, we do need to go fast here. And the candidate is not really going fast enough. We're only, we're only just getting to 30 there. We should have already been to 40 or more. So there is a problem with making progress here with the candidate. And the candidate really does need to um, go a little bit quicker on these roads. So we're going. We're only going 35 now. There is a bend, fair enough, but we could be going a lot faster than this, I think. And some um, sometimes there's a right turn here on a test, but uh, we're just carrying on on this occasion. If if you do turn right into that road, do a really early signal. Let everybody know in good time. It's a it's a quite a Quite a dodgy right turn in my opinion on a 60 road just to stop in the middle of it on a bend. So this is a great opportunity to get to speed but we're only getting to 41, 42 miles an hour. We could be going a lot faster, we could be getting to 50, 55 here if not 60 even. But um, we didn't quite get there and there was some faults picked up for that. Nothing serious, just uh, just could go faster, I guess. And we're coming up to uh, Harridan now. Could be wrong, but I think it's called Harridan. And we're gonna be turning right up here. We've, we've entered a 40, so now it's a, it's a reasonable speed. We're low. We are dropping under 40 there, aren't we? And we're turning right here into Little Harridan. And don't forget, there is a filter lane there on the right. We need to go into that. Some people don't. So we're just checking around and we're moving over. And we're waiting for our opportunity, big opportunity. Keeping left of the keep left sign and into the 30. And through the village we go. Lovely countryside around Northamptonshire. Amazing views, just driving around the country lanes, it's really nice. So as we go through the village, nothing behind us, that's good. And uh, just coming back into the national speed limit roads where we really should, where we can just choose a reasonable speed to drive at. In the moment we're at 36. 37, that's not bad, we're getting there. We're getting up to 40, so 40 is minimum, I would say. I would recommend on the straight bits. It's Even 40 can be too slow, of course. But I would certainly be minimizing your speed at 40 on these roads, if it's safe to do so. Always, if it's safe to do so. Obviously, sometimes it isn't. But um, a big reason why people fail on roads like this is because they go over the white line trying to dodge um, 
potholes I guess and puddles if it's raining you've got to be careful of that that you don't go too far over the white line and if there's a bend coming up obviously not at all we're going to do an angled start here so what we do is we pull up behind a car leave enough room to pull out and then when it's safe move on when you're ready so we're just uh, checking mirror line spots everything good waiting for the red car make a couple of cars here and don't forget to signal when an angle start always signal because we can't see in front of the gray car we don't know what's in the road behind in front of these two cars there might be someone waiting to cross and a signal would be beneficial and uh, straight over the roundabout And as we exit the village, we can see that it's a 60 coming up. National speed limit applies and off we go. Hopefully reaching reasonable speeds. Back into the country lanes again. A lot of test routes are following country lanes these days as the fatality rate is quite high on these roads. So, um, new government initiative is to put a lot more tests out into these kind of roads. We've just gone into a 30 there. And it's quite squashy, these roads, isn't it, really? Candidates doing a good job keeping to their side of the road. Coming around the corner into Orlingbury. Um... Just reading those road signs and the road markings. If, they, if the road marking says slow and you're not going slow, it might be an idea to do so. Going around this bend. Lovely obstruction there. And oh, the worst thing happened. A car came. Um, but we're very well anticipated by the candidate. And now someone's letting that candidate go, so checking the mirrors and coming round. A little thank you wave maybe for that car. Don't know why the car stopped really, we'd already committed to the stop on our end, but it's nice, whatever, you know, just got to get on with life, haven't you? Normally if someone commits to a stop, you just carry on and presume your, presume your priority. Going up through Allingbury now, around that lovely church, medieval church. I presume it looks old enough. And um, there's normally a park up here along this road. Just checking the mirror. Parking up on the left. Couple of cars coming. It's amazing how um, in villages um, there's so much traffic going through them. People are always rushing off somewhere. So moving off again. Make sure we're going to do a good mirror check and off we go.
Okay, we're about to turn right. Now this is quite a quite a difficult right sometimes because we're going so fast. We really have to plan this right. It's a little bit quick on this turn, but all under control. So there we go. And along these country lanes, there's an advisory 40 mile an hour on this bend coming up. There was a major accident here. Um, a fatality unfortunately a couple of years ago so um, it's a bit of a sensitive spot for the people people teaching and examining candidates uh, so nice slow round the bend and nice and slow round this bend past the memorial on the right used to be a big pothole around this corner but they do seem to have filled it up which is quite handy be careful of potholes um, examiners don't always warn you of them and um, you can end up going straight through them and if it damages the car the test could be and has been in the past terminated due to pothole damage um, so keep an eye out for these potholes especially out in the countryside on these country lanes. Now we're heading up, I do believe we're heading up into uh, Pytchley. And unfortunately, this is where things didn't go quite to plan on this test. We're just uh, coming into the 30, I believe. Can't really see very well when I'm doing this voiceover because the for some reason it's dimmed my screen. I can't work out how to undim it. So I'm looking out. It's like driving at night with me. So we're going through Pytchley at the moment. And um, not a lot happens in Pytchley up this part. We just got to be careful of that bend. We're only doing 22, so that's about right, I suppose, for these bends and stuff. Now, the instruction is, at the end of the road, turn left, and then take an immediate right. So, turn left, and then take an immediate right. So it's left and then right. The candidate got a bit confused about what that meant. So what does it mean? Where are we turning right? What's an immediate right? So as the candidate was thinking about that, they forgot to stop on the giveaway line um, precisely and actually stopped over it slightly. Unfortunately, there was a car coming from the right that had to go round. You can see the cars passing the center line in order to get round that candidate. And that's the left and then the immediate right. But unfortunately, that ad added, um, ended up, I should say, as a serious fault because the candidate did not stop on the giveaway line and actually stopped over it. The candidate said afterwards they were confused about what the examiner meant by an immediate right. So it all comes clear in reflection, but uh, in the moment on a driving test, you know, things can seem to be a little bit confused. So unfortunately, uh, apart from a very good drive, really good drive, um, that was the foul point in this test route. So just a little, due to a little bit of confusion on directions, the candidates um, forgotten to stop on the, or to concentrate, I should say, on intending to stop on the giveaway line. And that's a real shame because everything else was pretty good. Only a couple of miners there here and there, mostly for not making progress in the road where we could have gone faster. Here we could go a little bit faster even. We're only doing 30, aren't we? 35, 36, we're getting faster. Slow but sure. No cars behind, so <laughs> it's not the end of the world. It's normally a bit more um, of an issue if there's like a stream of cars behind 
and the candidate's only doing like 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so that in those situations, you really do want to be getting to a reasonable speed anyway. So as we come down here, um, it's just a country lane back towards Kettering. To be fair, there's another memorial down here on the right. And you can see why they introduce country lanes where it is there they introduce country lanes into the test a, a lot more because of the is there is a high fatality rate on them and it's just good to know people can drive along them safely so as we're coming down to the roundabouts over the bridge over the a14 back towards we call this roundabout the mcdonald's roundabout for obvious reasons when we get to the roundabout we'll be turning left and we'll be heading back towards the test center You'll be very surprised how quickly a test route um, will go in time. It seems to be a very quick thing, a test, when you're doing one. Um, in reality, it's 30 to 40 minutes long. This route it is 30 minutes at the moment, but it really, you know, you ask candidates afterwards and they think it's 10 minutes. It's so quick so much concentration when turning right here make sure look for oncoming traffic make sure there's nothing coming and turning right into the test center now you may have noticed the candidate hasn't done a maneuver yet there's one maneuver required in a driving test and there is there is no maneuver but there will be a maneuver because sometimes candidates are asked to reverse um, into a parking space at the end of a test and that will be the reversing maneuver so the uh, the learner in front there in the red car is doing a maneuver we're moving forward to allow the gates to be closed behind us as it's the end of the day for this test center this is the last test and the uh, candidates been asked to reverse into any bay of their choice and they've decided to do the clever thing and reverse back in a straight line so there's no 45 degree method here we're just coming round and aiming for the second bay from the end there on the left the candidates coming round here and stopping and then very tentatively into reverse and very tentatively with good observations I might add um, looking around looking around and then reversing back eventually we're we gonna get there reversing back into that into that bay so we're going there slow but sure a bit more practice may be needed there to, to go a bit faster a bit more confidence examiner just walking off on the right and we'll get there anyway we'll get into that bay there's no there's no fault on that there's it was good observation and we're just moving back into this bay we have um really good mirrors for this we have um kind of blind spot mirrors facing down to the ground so that helps candidates guide the car between the lines and um, this car is actually fitted with um, a re reversing camera and the lines move so you can actually steer the lines into the bay and a lot of a lot of candidates use the camera and why not and that will be the end of that one so uh, the candidates been asked to secure the car with a handbrake and a park because we're in an automatic you may not have known that and unfortunately you've not been successful on this occasion and it was right at the end 
where we went over the line slightly um, and the white car passing had to move to the other side of the road. So unfortunate ending to this test but a very good experience for the candidate. Second time round the candidate I'm sure will do really well and sometimes it's you just got to mark these th things down to experience. So uh, it's quite hard to pass the first driving test. It's it's a well any driving test it's a 48% pass rate nationally. But this is the video ending so I hope you've enjoyed that and got something out of it. Um, and like and subscribe if you can that would be great thank you very much if you do that and uh until the next video